Hello, my name is Simon Senkai. I'm glad to welcome you back to our fourth breakfast meeting. Uh, and in this meeting, uh, we're going to look at uh, the principle of planning, the principle of people, and the principle of persistence. Remember, in the previous sessions, we looked at the principle of purpose, we looked at the principle of passion, and today we are to look at the principle of planning, people, and persistence. Don't miss. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Yeah, I'm sure you've had such a great morning. I'm glad to be here again with you. And I want to thank you so much, especially those that are coming back for the fourth time. This is our fourth breakfast meeting where we dedicated our lives to making sure that you live a purposeful life for a life that has meaning. I greeted you in that way because of my own counsel, uh, counsel Sophia Chigozi. You're welcome and I'm glad to, s to see you here. If you need a lawyer in Kampala who is young and smart, she's there. Uh, so this is our fourth breakfast meeting and we've been looking at several principles that make us who we are in life. Those of you that attended the first session, we gave a foundation of these presentations and the subsequent two uh, sessions, we looked at the principle of purpose and the principle of passion. We say to ourselves that if a fish was created to swim, a bird created to fly, even man was created to do something. The word man doesn't mean a male person. The word man combines both female and males and it comes from the Hebrew word ish meaning the spirit. That is why in your primary science they used to tell you that man is a living animal. They meant both men and women. So your spirit, uh, yesterday I was fortunate to be somewhere and someone was talking about the same things. Your spirit knows exactly why you exist. Your mind doesn't know. But the world we live in today empowers the mind, not the spirit. The reason why I go to, we go to universities, we get degrees, I've studied, I've read some books. But those books only empower the mind. But remember, the mind believes in facts. The fact is we are gathered here at Piatto restaurant, but the truth is we are not employees of Piatto. The spirit believes in the truth, the mind believes in the facts. Facts are temporary, but the truth will always be true. So the reason why we gather here is to help people understand the essence of their spirits the reason why they were created the reason why they're living i told you the most frustrating thing in life is waking up every morning and you don't know why you've woken up some people think coming to piato or going to their workplaces that is their purpose of creation no we're created to uh, to bring something we are like vehicles a taxi, you can board a taxi from here to Entebbe. The taxi is not that important, but the person the taxi is carrying and the reason why they're heading to Entebbe. So, our bodies are just taxis. They are carrying a spirit that came here to fulfill a certain purpose. And we said that 
the most important thing in life is finding out why you were born. If you find out why you were born, your life cannot be wasted. You can't even spend a lot of time doing things that don't even add value in you. But the greatest challenge to humanity today, especially the black race, we've not been taught to understand these things and to cherish these things. Otherwise, this place would be, would be full. Blacks don't respect understanding. They yearn for knowledge. There's a difference between knowledge and understanding. Solomon asked for three things, that is knowledge, wisdom, uh, knowledge understanding, and wisdom. But understanding was uh, superior. In universities and the newspapers we read, the books that we read, give us knowledge, but they don't give us understanding. And it is rare to find understanding because even people who do understand are few. When someone tells you you don't understand, they've not abused you. They are just telling you that you don't understand what you know. You can be knowledgeable when you're not understanding. You can have a lot of information, but you cannot use that information to have an impact on the society around you or the community around you in order, your, in order for your life to change. So the most important thing is not getting information. That is why in these sessions we don't give knowledge. We want to give understanding. For when someone understands something, you don't need to meet them again. All of us have people that have somehow shaped our lives. The person who made me the person, okay, who helped me to realize who I am. I was in transit. I met this guy in transit. We met, he was a professor somewhere, he was an old man, and we had a chat for 15 minutes. But those 15 minutes have remained with me since. So to change someone's lives, you don't need uh, to meet them several times. You simply need to meet them once. And when you turn on that switch inside of their lives, they begin, they get a natural compass of their life. You know, life without purpose is like a ship without compass. You can float on the water, you have the ability to live, you have the ability to be alive, but that doesn't mean you, you have a direction, you know where you're heading. Some people think they, they will wake up, uh, go to their workplaces, make money, get wives, have children, start a few businesses, they grow old, they die. I'm not among those people. And to inspire a generation, you don't need to have amounted a lot or have amassed a lot of wealth. You simply need to have mastered a few steps of your life. Each of us here has a story. If someone trains you and gives you enough guidance on how you can package that story, your own story can change thousands of lives. But the story must be aligned with your purpose. The reason why you can listen to people, you can even listen, you're listening to me right now. I've not asked you to listen to me, but your spirit has some, somehow sensed that the spirit that is standing before you is somehow connected to some spiritual power that comes from the spiritual maker. So even if your mind doesn't want to be attentive, your spirit is going to force you to be attentive. Why? Because I'm in my kingdom. I'm a king in my kingdom. When you find your kingdom, you rule. So I don't want to share with you what I studied in university. I want to share with you the few things that have made it possible for me to stand before you. If you can know what I know and understand it the way I understand it, automatically things change. Happiness is not created by how much you earn every month. Happiness is created by your ability to be in your line of purpose and moving towards your destiny. In fact, success is not having money. Success is not building a good house. Success is not having wives or children or driving Porsche cars and so on and so forth. 
Success is your ability to find out why you were created and you moving towards that. And that's why the only two people that know whether you're successful or not is you and your God. <clears throat> Other people can only judge from what they see. The people of the world see things and they use them to judge people's success. You can find someone who doesn't have the money that you have, but they are more successful than you. So in these sessions, we are, we are looking at greatness. What defines greatness? Because all of us are working for greatness, and we said greatness is a product of influence. Influence is a product of significance. Significance is a product of value. Value is a product of refinement. Refinement is a product of uniqueness. Uniqueness is a product of a gift, and a gift is given by God. We said if you want to be great, go back to your creator. Find out your gift. Your gift is what separates you from the entire human race. That gift is what makes you unique. When you find that uniqueness, you have to work on it. If you see me speaking before you, I've been working on refining my gift. The more you refine your gift, you become a person of value. The more you amass a lot of value in you, you become significant in society. And the more you become important in society, society begins to recognize you. That is, you begin to influence people in that society. And the more influential you become, the greater. And we said, Bobby Wine, Kansime, Chameleons are great. But they don't have money that Wavamno has. They don't have money that Chirumila has. In fact, when Chirumila passes by there, no one, none of you will even bother to go and see them. But when they say Bobby Wine is there, I mean all people will turn their heads. They're not following money, they are following greatness. The greatness that is hidden in the gift. So when you find that gift, which is your purpose, the gift will attract the money to you. So there is time for investment, investing in yourself, which is why I always plead to people to invest in understanding more than they invest in the cars, the buildings, the people. The greatest investment ever done was in people. Jesus Christ, Nabi Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they never left buildings in their names. But today when she's praying, she prays through his name. And I pray through his name. Why? These people never left buildings or plots in their names. But they are great. Why? Because they invested in people. In fact, when he was leaving, he said, If I go, you shall do greater works than I. Because he knew he had invested in these people, prepared them, and these people had their own special gifts. So when you invest in someone, they can even be greater. When someone is greater, you who mentored them doesn't make you any less. It just gives you pride. That is why in organizations, yesterday we were at Centenary Bank, in Centenary Bank, I told them, you go to organizations and you find people fighting each other, competing for sports. Sports are positions, and positions are temporary. Someone who knows who they are, they can't look at other people as competitors. They will always look at them as colleagues. Sheba is my colleague. She's not my competitor. Why? I can never be her. She can never be me. I can't be you, any of you here, and you can't be me. You also have your own purpose, your own calling. That is why if people find this, all people will be friends and colleagues. But people who are ignorant of themselves, they don't know who they are. They are always envious of other people. But the more you understand yourself, the more you learn how to relate with other people because you always know who to work with, who to stand with, who to talk with, which places to go to. And by the way, when you find your purpose, you know which people to work and relate with. 
You know which places to go to. You know which things you're not supposed to do. Why? Because your purpose disciplines you. I know HIV can kill me. I can't simply wake up and sleep around. I know uh, beer and wallage might destroy me, might destroy my, uh, my liver. Why? Because I have a purpose. I want to fulfill my purpose. So, I don't drink simply because I cannot drink. I, have, I can drink. But when you find your purpose, it gives you discipline. I can't be out in the night doing nothing. I'm supposed to be home to protect myself. And the rest I leave to God. So in the first sessions, we looked at the principle of purpose. We said these are the six pillars to becoming the person that you created to be. And the first pillar was the principle of purpose. And we said, when you find your purpose, you have found who you are. You have found something that makes you alive. You know why you wake up every morning. You know, it is very absurd to wake up in the morning just because you have no alternative. You leave your bed, take a shower, sit in a taxi or drive your, your own car. Make sure you're at your workplace early in the morning. Why? Because the rules that were set requires you to be at work at that particular time. You sit with the people you hate. You sit in a place you don't like. And you do the work that you don't love. Why? Because of money. Fees, you know I have to take my kids to school. I have to do A, B, C, D. So money forces you to do things, but not purpose. That is why people are unhappy. Amidst how much they earn. They're very unhappy. So, we said when you find your purpose, your job prepares you for your work. That is your purpose. And we said the difference between your work and your job, your job is something you're paid to do. Work is something you're born to do. You can retire from your job, but you can't retire from your work. You can be expelled from your job, but they can't touch your work. You require, you're required to have qualifications on your job. In your work, you just have to find your purpose. That is the qualification. So that is the difference. So the purpose of our existence is the most important thing in our lives. If you don't know, if you're, you don't know why you do whatever you do, you have a problem. Let me tell you, my actual being here is not important. But the reason why I accept amid the soul odds to stand here, the reasons as to why I stand before you are much more important than my actual being here. If I, don't, if I didn't know why, I wouldn't be here. But you know, Legacy is in every life that you touch, not in every penny that you get. And don't judge your days by how much you have harvested, but by how many seeds you have planted. I'm planting a forest of seeds in you. That is why I come here. I don't come here because you pay money. I come here because I have to do what I'm doing. If I don't do it, it doesn't help me. The only way it can help me is by giving it to you. What I understand doesn't help me. That is how the universe was designed. You to get what you want, you must give what you have. So the world is suffering today. Even our country is suffering today. Why? Because there are so many people who want to get without giving. They are in organizations, they are in palestinian bodies, they are in government simply eating without giving. They are collecting, they are amassing, but they are not giving anything to society. Yet life was designed in the way that when you give me what you have, I give you what I have in, at the end of the day. In fact, if you look at butter trade, that was a true definition of humanity. You want beans? I have ginats. I give you ginats, you give me beans. 
when they introduced money it spoiled the entire system people started working for money yet those days people had to work for themselves and work to work for each other today work for money the reason why you work at piato it's not because you love piato so much you want money I always tell people in church, the reason why they go to church is not because they love Jesus. No, they want what Jesus promised. He said, I am the way, truth, so if you want everything, go through my name. If there was any other way of not going through him, but they get what they want, they would have sidelined the guy. So they just want what he promised. You know what she told it, they pick uh, told the motor car. But it's not it's not the man. In fact, people are not looking for God. In actual sense, go to church or go to the mosque, look at people who are doing what they are doing. They are just following a tradition. But when you look at their practical practical lives, they lack the relationship with God. Let me tell you. Both Islam and Christianity believe that Adam was the first man. Isn't it? That is why the Muslim name Adam, the Christian name Adam. And none, none of those two people has ever said or has ever claimed that Adam is our name. Christians name Adam, Muslims name Adam. Why? Because both of them believe that he was the first man. But this man who is uh, known to have lived in the Garden of Eden. People have looked for Eden up to now. They have failed to find it because the word Eden comes from the Hebrew word uh, meaning an open door, space, presence. Eden meant not a garden but presence. Adam was in the presence of God. So when Ad God created Adam, put him in Eden, in his presence. It was in the garden and gave him rules and so much things to follow. I don't want to go into religion. But Adam had a mutual understanding, a mutual relationship with this man who created him. You know that. He, he, he wasn't, I can imagine, the guy wasn't worshipping or even tithing. Yalita told us Zaka. They call it Zaka. Why? Because he had a relationship with God. You know when you have a relationship with someone, a mutual understanding between you two people, you don't need to fight each other. You'll always have a conversation. Adam could have a conversation with God whenever he wanted. Until when he disobeyed God's principles. What did God do? He didn't do much. He just puts a gap. In that gap, Adam lost two things. Power and control. Remember, he had power over everything on earth and control of all things that were created. Do you know the reason why people go to witchcraft? To know, to foresee, to be told what can happen. That is control. You know, they want to feel they have power. They want to feel they have control. They control their circumstances. And all hum the human race is fighting to control the circumstances around us. People want to have power on what to eat, what, what to drive, what to put on, where they live, where they go. They are looking for control. In fact, they are not looking for money. I have not come across someone looking for billions of money. No, they want what money can offer. A good car, a good life. Because at the end of the day, don't, people don't eat money. They don't eat paper. When they get the paper, they use it to design the kind of life they want so this guy adam had that relationship and in that relationship that he lost he lost power and control what did he have to do i'm using my imagination because i'm also a god don't you believe that we are all gods you don't know we are gods that is why we have the power to procreate eh? Food. You are a God and your destiny is within your own hands to create it. That is why when you sleep with a woman, you create a baby. That is power 
of creation. God created one seed. One seed. And he hid that seed in a man. One seed. And he never had to create another seed. It was that seed that has been multiplying and multiplying up to now. When God created things, he hid them in seeds. If it was a, a pineapple seed, it was one. He didn't have to come back and create more. One seed could produce more seeds. So when Adam lost that, I don't want to interfere with your, uh, with your styles of belief. Adam had to please God to do things to win back the relationship. People hate me because I'm going into religion, their faith. When you love a woman so much and you lose her, what do you do? You have to win her back if you still love her. The things that you do in your effort to win her back, you're creating something called religion. Religion, the word religion is not a religious word. No, even Christianity is not a religious word. Why? The people that never believed in Christ called the people who followed the Christ Christians. Look for understanding. The, the, the book that I read says, when you find the truth, the truth shall set you free. But what did I wanted to tell you? Man created and started religion. Religion is money search for God. Relationship is God's search for man. That is why we always remind people that in whichever religion you are, do you have a relationship with your creator? Because that is the most important thing. Whether you're Muslim, Anglican, a Catholic, Pentecostal, atheist, I don't know. But do you feel between your spirit, your spirit has a relationship with that supernatural power? Do you feel it? If you don't feel it, you simply have religion. You practice and you follow the traditions and the rules, but you don't believe, you don't have the faith. That is why today people go to uh, churches uh, and they pray, they believe, they accept. But on the steps of the church, when they're moving out, they say it is not possible. It is impossible. But they've been praying and believing. People are contradicting themselves. They believe God is there and can do everything. When they move out, statistics tell them that it is impossible. So that is, that is the work of the mind. If you don't understand the beginning of these things, you will be misled and you won't understand anything. Your mind believes in facts. That is why it has been fighting your spirit that believes in the truth. All of us here, you have a saying, Echintu Changambi. What is that Echintu? When you're going to do something, and then something, a deepest, the deepest voice in the realm of your spirit communicates to you, don't go. But the mind tells you, no, for, for the fact you have to meet this guy, you know you need opportunities from this guy, go. But the spirit keeps on saying, don't. And the mind says, go. The greatest battles of humanity are between the mind and the spirit. All of you have been, you have kept on postponing what you have to do. Your spirits have been telling you, go and do ABCD. Your mind tells you, you know, it gives you the facts. They say, go, go at Piata and attend a session. You say, I don't have money. You know, the mind gives, starts to give you reasons as to why you can't. So those that follow their minds live an average life. And those that follow their spirits live an extraordinary life. That is why all great innovators and creators like the Steve Jobs, the Bill Gates, they all claim to have dropped out of school. They followed their spirits, not the mind. The Gandhis, the Martin Luthers, all people that have had a great impact on this universe followed their spirits, not their minds. That is why they were able to have the passion to be consistent, to be persistent amidst great challenges. People who are not in their line of purpose, they give up. If you gave up on something, just know it wasn't yours. You can't stop me from doing what I'm doing right now. You can't. 
no matter what you can do, unless you cut off my head. But even I'm sure my spirit will continue doing it from wherever it will be. You can't. So if you gave up on yourself, that means it wasn't yours. So we looked at the principle of purpose and we said, the moment you find purpose, passion comes automatically. I love what I'm doing. You don't have to force me, you don't have to teach me, you don't have to persuade me, you don't have to convince me. I love what I'm doing. Even if you take me somewhere and you don't pay me, I always say that and people take, actually they take me for granted and indeed they don't. So even if you don't pay me, I never get disappointed. Why? Because I love what I'm doing. So today, we are looking at the principle of planning. Last time I asked you to write down the things that you love, at least four or three things that you love, so that at the end of these sessions, we shall be able to move along with you to discuss in details how you can actually find out what defines who you are. So today we are going to look at the principle of planning. We look at three principles if we have the time. Shiba doesn't like it, but I have no option. The principle of planning. Like we say, if you fail to plan, then you're planning to fail. If I could ask you, each of you, inside your spirit, what is the plan of your life for this week and this month and this year? What is your plan? That is why it is very important to find your purpose. If you don't find your purpose, you cannot have a plan. You can only plan to achieve what you already know. That is why I ask you, please, don't miss this ses these sessions. It is just 60,000 shillings. Breakfast is 30,000 shillings. I think, not so. It is expensive, just 60,000 shillings, which means this session is for 30,000 shillings. What is 60,000 shillings to Ugandan standards? Our economy is collapsing at an increasing rate. Our money is losing value at an increasing rate. rate. We are expecting a 100,000 note. We are thinking of it and it will come. Why? Because the country is not making any money. You make money through foreign exchange. We import 90% and export 5%. We can't live. So money is losing value. Today when you wake up with 100,000 shillings, it is useless. If you're driving, you can only buy a few 25 liters of fuel. Only 25, 100,000 shillings. So, the papers you think have value are useless. What has value is what goes into your head, not what goes into your stomach. People have so much focus on what they eat. And let me tell you, you eat from January 1st to December 31st. When does your mind eat? Some of you graduated four, five years ago, three, five. You have never read a book. You don't even new, read newspapers. You don't read anything. And you think you have that old information that can apply in this changing world of today. So when you find an opportunity to learn, please. I don't want to wake up you to wake up and see me on CNN becoming an into seeing us becoming so international, huge, and you say we once knew those people. No. You can know what we know. It is not magic, it is, it is a choice that you make every day to empower yourself and make yourself different. So, what is your plan? Why are you here? Did you come here because your organization paid for you or forced you? If you came here because your organization paid for you or forced you, you haven't found out who you are. You don't even know why. You're like, I won't give that example. But you should have a reason. Don't wait for your company to force you to come. 
Stop. These sessions are here. Interact with Shiba. You work at Piato. Try and be here. These are some of the things that help your staff to be more efficient. You know what gives efficiency is someone who knows their purpose. What makes you effective at work is your profession. When you have a qualification as a chef, when you have a qualification as a barrister, that makes you effective. But what makes you efficient is knowing why you're a barrister. So you guys, if you don't utilize these opportunities, they'll be wasted and one day you'll say, those guys used to come at Piato. Like they tell the Mohanjis, they, 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 they started their comedy in a small place somewhere. And now people are saying, Kali, those people, we know how they started, so what? What is your plan for your life? What is your plan after here? The greatest mistake you can ever do is failing to plan. For if you fail to plan, you're planning to fail. Whatever you're dreaming, put it on paper. Whatever you see, put it on paper. Learn to write your thoughts. I humbly ask you, learn to write your thoughts. You can't come here and simply listen. The Chinese proverb says, when I hear, I forget. When I see, I remember. But when I do, I understand. When I hear, I forget. When I see, I remember. But when I do, I understand. Put something down. Whatever you write by your hands automatically connects with your spirit. Those of you that have gone to school and have read books, when you're revising books while writing, you will never forget what you wrote. Unless you have a problem and people must pray for you, the entire nation. So put your dreams on paper. Put those things that you see inside of you when you close your eyes. And if you want to see that inner world, close the physical world, the physical eyes. When you sit alone, close your physical eyes. That is the only way you can see the world that you, you couldn't see. That is why you ask people, please, find some time, go to have a quiet place and meditate. In meditation, you get inside yourself and you begin to see why your spirit exists. Your spirit begins to show you the kind of life and the kind of world you're supposed to live in and create. That is why those that introduced religion, they always asked people to close their eyes even up to now. People think it's a tradition. And people do things in religion as in a way as if they are doing traditions. Let's pray. Close your eyes. You don't need to remind people to close their eyes. Whenever they ask someone, lead us in prayer. Okay, let's pray. Close your eyes. Why do they ask you to close your eyes? Because they want to open the eyes of your spirit. So that the spirit can show the mind what it is seeing. Because when the eyes of the world are seeing, the eyes of the spirit are blocked. So put it on paper. And when you write something, you don't have to care so much on how you're going to fulfill it. Your role is to believe it and put it on paper. Leave the how. If you saw the guys, if you saw, because this was not given to the ladies, if you saw the kind of woman that you want to be your wife, who is smart, who is good, like, I mean, she's spot on, but you realize you're far from her, maybe even your class is a bit from hers, what do you do when you have convinced your mind that she's supposed to be the one? What do you do? You launch an attack. But before you launch an attack, you strategize. Even if a man has not gone to school, they are born with the in strategy, ability to strategize. Men are so good when it comes to getting women they want. They are so weak when it, when it gets to getting things they want in life. So they develop their strategy. They think they launch an attack. 
The first day, they're not given a chance. They go back. They review their strategy. Why? They don't need to go to school. They review it. Tomorrow, they launch a different style. They, until when they win, they never give up. Why? Whatever the mind of man can conceive and believe, it can achieve. The most important thing here is identifying that she is the one. The how comes automatically, even if you're dense. That is why even in life, the most important thing is knowing what. When you know the what, the how automatically comes. How you're going to do something? It automatically comes for as long as you know this is what I want. The how just comes automatically. So, God always guides a spirit that has found out the what of its purpose. If I can tell you how I started this thing, in senior five, by the time you see someone, it means they have really gone through some tough time. In senior five, that is when I found myself. People helped me to find myself. And my OB, he knows, he's outside there, he knows, we work together. He knows that in senior five, in my O level, I was, I always thought I was going to, to be a musician. I could rap because all my books were full of raps. Red Rat, uh, Eminem. I could rap. All those raps would be in my head. Can you imagine? Just look at my figure. doesn't even connect to that. But I could rap. I used to put on heavy shoes, uh, like three kilograms each. You buy a shoe, they buy for your shoe, you even buy a new slipper, you put it inside to be heavy. Used to put on huge and uh, huge trousers, huge, huge pants, and I was extremely tiny. But very bad. So I stood as a, as a minister for entertainment, I contested to be a minister for entertainment. When results came back, they had made me a minister for education. They disappointed the voters. That was the first electoral commission I'd ever seen to change things. So I became a minister for education. I was in charge of internal and external debates, representing the school in internal and external seminars. I was always the first on the list. That changed my life. One day I was interacting with one of the brothers who did that, and he said, no. You didn't know who you were. We saw something different when you were talking, when you were campaigning. So we gave you something that we knew defined who you were. And you have a gift. If you grow it and concentrate on it, you will help so many people's lives. And that was the beginning. They told me something I loved. So put something on paper. The how will automatically come. If you're not moving towards the goal, God cannot direct you. Many of us have spent our entire lives making other people rich, going to workplaces that we hate. But that is more like planting a boiled bean seed and you expect to harvest beans. Beans, you boil them and then you plant them and expect a harvest. That is equivalent to a person who is moving towards nothing. So if you're moving towards nothing, then you can't achieve it. So you should stop letting people hire your gift. If a gift is very expensive, you must have a plan. They can't pay for a gift. No one can pay for a gift. Messi earns a billion shilling a week. Messi earns a billion shilling a week. Whether he's been on the pitch or not, he earns a billion shilling a week. That is minus other allowances, minus other monies from adverts from his own company. But he earns a billion shilling a week. Even the President of the United States doesn't. A leader of a trillion dollar economy. Why? Because mess has a gift. To be a President of the United States, you don't need to have a gift because the systems are there. You simply need to know what, why you want to be President. But to be messy, 
you must have a gift. So have a plan. What are you carrying? If I can ask you. What are you carrying with you? You must understand what, that what you're carrying is extremely expensive and valuable. People must fight for it. People must plead to have you here. People must beg you to work with you. And it is always a blessing for people to work with you, not to work for them. People must find that blessing of working with you. That is why I tell people when you associate with me, it is a blessing. Because my spirit is blessed. I'm within my line of purpose. When you associate with me, your life can never be the same. Because I don't live with average people. I don't. If you're my friend, I'll always be talking to you. Sometimes those days I used to go on dates and women hated me for one reason. When I go on a date, I instead cancel them. Why? Because my purpose is superior over me. It is powerful that when I interact with you, if, instead of telling you what I want, I'll instead say different things. So you must understand that you're carrying something very important and very valuable. So respect it. So if you know your purpose, if you have the passion for that which you found, I want you to draw a plan of achieving that. You are given those things on your tables. Read and follow. At the end of this session, we will be able to move with you a journey of finding yourself. So having known the purpose, I want to summarize with the principle of people. I know Shiba doesn't want it. Yes, the time. We started late. And we beg, I kindly beg you, please come early so that we start early and we leave early. So the principle of people in summary. In life you need people to help you succeed and in life you need to lose people to succeed. You must know what kind of people that you want. And you must know which kind of people you have to lose. Look into your mobile phone. If you get, if you got an opportunity today and requires you to have five million shillings today, before midday, you get an opportunity and you must have five million shillings. Do you have five people in your phone? You can call and ask for one million shilling each. And they never ask you why you want their money, where you're taking it, when you're returning it, and how much profits you're returning it with. If you don't have five people, do you have ten people whom you can call or uh, send a message instantly? And they send you 500,000 shillings without asking you questions. You just tell them, send me 500,000 shillings. And they send it without even asking you questions if you don't have five okay do you have 25 people in your phone who can give you at least 200,000 shillings at least 200,000 shillings without asking you questions if you don't better lose that phone just delete the entire uh, the entire contacts in your phone. Delete all of them and keep your mothers, your fathers, and a few of your siblings. Just know you don't have friends. You haven't done enough work to be the person that you want to be. Why? Because in life, there are some people we need to become and there are some people we need to lose to become. That is the principle of people. You cannot be successful without people. However, you must be careful with the people that you welcome in your life. There are some people, there are some good people who are bad for you. There are some good people who are not right for your life. So you must be able to differentiate between good and what, 
what is good doesn't mean that it is right. You realize that maybe you would have been far. You would have been different. But maybe the people you've been associating with are wrong. Why would I have a friend? We only meet when we are going to drink. We only meet when we are going to spend money. We only meet when we are going to party. We only meet when we are going to talk about nonsense. Why would I have a, such a friend? It is like having a woman. The only time you think about her when, the only time she thinks about you when it is money. When you see her call on phone, you just know this is money. This is money going. People must think, must, start, must, see, must see a lot of value in you so that when they see your call, they, they are eager to pick. But when they see it, it is money, they silence it. Well, you've, you know, you've not been picking my calls. I've been tight. They were not tight. You don't have value in their lives. So you must know which kind of people. You have realized, you realize that when you read the scriptures, whenever God wanted to do something or to use any man, he had to separate them with family. Sometimes the worst people to bring, to bring close at your life are your family. Let me tell you, love your family. Love your family deeply, but keep them where they are. Why? Because some of the people we grew up with think they know us better than even the person who created us. It is family that will think, ah, he can't go far, she can't go far. Just let her be, she can't go far. Why do you think all those guys in the scriptures, do you know that Nabi Muhammad his uncle that nurtured him never became a Muslim. Did you know that? Do you know? Okay, you know this because it is a story. Jesus was chased by his own people. They threw stones to him. Why? That is where the saying came from that a prophet is never appreciated where they're born. Nabiteva mumanya jazarwa. So whenever God wanted to use any man, he had to separate them with people who knew them. Sometimes I can be talking to my family members and relatives. They listen, they know, they listen. But some of them, ah, this young boy who has been young here, is telling us things. Ah, don't waste my time. Why? Because they think they know you. So, Keep company with the people who are useful in your life, people that encourage you to be better or to better your best, people who not only make you party, but also support your growth and development. Jesus himself never invited his family to be among his disciples. Neither is Prophet Muhammad. You need people who are good for you. Family is not good, but we should love it deeply. But sometimes when striving for great things, you must keep them. That is your family, where they are. I want each of you here, don't just take some of these sessions for granted because you pay some money. Don't waste your time because let me tell you, right now there's someone breathing their last. The only day that is in our control is today. And the only opportunity we have is the opportunity of this hour. Because right now I'm standing before you. This is my own opportunity. You don't have control over the next few hours. You don't have control over tomorrow. You don't even know what is going to happen next week. Or next month. Or next year. This might be your year or next year might be your year. I'm not a prophet of doom. But what am I saying? I'm saying, wake up and stop being average and work towards a certain goal. I want to thank those that have been able to be here. At least 
from the day we started, like doctor, I'm glad. And at least I know faces, the common faces that have been here from the day we started. I thank you so much. Yes, you've been here. I encourage you to come back. We shall be looking at the principle of persistence. Because of time, we cannot now. Principle of persistence. And lastly, I wanted to give the last principle a lot of time. The principle of prayer. Extraordinary exploits are done by extraordinary people who believe in an extraordinary God. But I wanted us to go deep inside the prayer and ask ourselves what is prayer. And how do people pray? And how are people supposed to pray? Why? Because everything is set. The rules are there. Prayer is not a religious activity. Neither is fasting. Why? Because we are spiritual people. And the only way you can connect to the spiritual world is through prayer. So which means any human being that still has a body and the spirit must pray. So it is not a religious activity. It is an obligation to all humanity. Because that is the only way they can be in touch with the world that is superior over the physical world. And prayer is a license that allows the spiritual world to interfere in the physical world. You will understand that when the time comes. So thank you so much. Fill those forms. Read and fill. And at the end of these sessions, I'm, I'm sure next, uh, the coming session, we'll complete these principles and go into, some, go into something else. And maybe we shall have a session to discuss. And individually, when you come to outcome, individually, you'll be helped. Sheba must be ready and we must be ready, all of us, to help those people that come to us and they are serious with finding out who they are will be able to move along with you for a certain time because we know that if your life changes there are so many lives that can change as a result so thank you so much i wish you a good day a blessed month barakallahu fikum